So then, um, we all know what's happened with this player. You can see him on the title. Sandro Tonali. Obviously, I don't think many people spoke about it, but in this video, we're going to speak about the positives. We're going to be speaking about what Sandro Tonali can bring to Newcastle United next season. For every little detail, obviously, it's not like he's a brand new sign. We've seen him play a couple of games for the club in the Champions League, in the league. Um, we'll go through what Sandro's going to bring for Newcastle United next year. Make sure to leave a like, or subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It would be lot if we could do so. Anyways, lads, we'll start now. We'll just speak about everything we need to do about Sandro Tonali. So then, we'll speak about what Sandro Tonali's actually done for Newcastle United this since he signed. So, just league games, he played nigh on every minute against Villa. Scored, was unbelievable in the game. Link up player was unreal. Got back. I think he's got like the assist to the assist and in, in, in some of the goals. He was very, very good. Um and started that game. Man City away. I was there. Struggled a little bit, but it, yeah, again it is Man City. Liverpool at home, I thought he was quite good in that game. Um I wouldn't say he struggled, but like we had a tough start. And then Brighton away, he started the game um in midfield. It was the same midfield, but Something wasn't working in the midfield. We had Jordan and Bruno and Tonali and something wasn't working in, in that stage and everyone was like, what is going on? Brentford at, um, at home was our next game. He didn't play a minute in that match. Was on the bench, didn't play. And then against AC Milan in the Champions League, he was returned. He came off, um, so, um, substituted, he played the game. Was okay, but obviously it would have been an emotional game for him. And then didn't start against um, Sheffield United. Came off on the bench, but that game was game game set and done. Man City in the FA in, in, in the AFL Cup. He um, got uh, subbed off towards the end, but was quite good in that game. Burnley at home didn't start. PSG came off as a substitute. Played the whole game against West Ham. Came on for Crystal Palace, but it was in the middle of the West Ham Crystal Palace game where the news came out. Um, he walked round and everyone was chanting his name. Bruce Dortmund was his last game and then just before the World game he did get um, suspended for 10 months. Obviously in Newcastle United in the Premier League only got the one goal in five starts was unbelievable. That that goal was was sublime. You know what? I'll put it on screen now the limbs. It was it was sublime. Watch this boys. Oh, So obviously the negatives, he got banned for 10 months, obviously the injuries didn't help, he's not being injured, he's been training with the club week on week out, if, if you've seen, if you look at the training photos, he's there, training with the club, obviously we all know the club can't post anything because they know the backlash that they'll get, they can't really say anything apart from when news was coming out about Sandra Tonali's um, ban, we all know he got banned, it was a massive disappointment because obviously he was our marquee sign and he, he cost us a lot of money, it was... 60 odd million euros, something daft like that, around that region of money, it was around that. Um, it was so, so disappointing for him to get that. And it was when the injury started hitting us, that was when 
the band came in. Obviously, at that time, Newcastle United was still pushing for, for top four, top six at that time. Still in the Champions League. It was a disappointing um, time, but we couldn't really do much. We had to crack on and... He's just got a crack on. He's still being enjoying his time in Newcastle. Obviously, we all know the crap when he went at Weatherspoons. He's still being seen on the key side and getting another culture. Obviously, we all know he hasn't done an interview. He hasn't spoke. I'm sure he will. I'm sure the club will um, probably speak to him before he can make his return. Obviously, his return is the 27th of August. The Premier League returns two weeks prior to that. So, obviously, you all know it's only two more games till... Tonali can play. The Premier League returns on the 17th of August and then obviously the week after the 24th he returns on the Tuesday and then the game on the 30th um, of that weekend he can be in the Newcastle United squad again. There was a bit of fear, obviously he got another two month ban but it was not extended, it was just on the initial ban, obviously he got fined a lot as well um, and it was came out as well that obviously he, he bettered on Newcastle United matches, he betted on 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 Newcastle to win games. Um, I'll touch on other betting situations in a minute, but he bet. I think it was Man City in the Carabao Cup to win. West Ham away, obviously we didn't win. Um, I think Burnley at home was one, and there was another one. I think I might. I can't remember. I might even Brighton away. I can't remember, but he played some bets. Two of them came through. Two didn't. I'm sure it was some daft like that, but. It's different um, from what Lucas Paqueta has done, obviously, with a betting situation. I've never been a better. I've, n I've never downloaded Bet365, Sky Bet. I've never have and, and probably never will. Um, something I'll go to the casino and, and, and watch the football, and I might hire a, a DAF 5 one, but that is very, very rare. Normally, I just go with the lads and they end up spunking their money. So I've told them how I shouldn't do it, but it's an addictive. It's an addictive um, addicted um, stuff gambling seeing all that money winning obviously I think it's different to what Lucas Paqueta is doing Tonali was just betting on his team to win to lose whatever like what Ivan Tony was doing Lucas Paqueta is betting on himself to get yellow cards and deliberately getting yellow cards to win free money that's where that's where it gets fucked that's where it's completely wrong in my opinion because you're deliberately winning yourself money where Tonali's just betting on his team to win or, or to lose like what Ivan Tony was saying, but with the betting scandal, betting and, and whatnot, it's 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 it's, it's, it's shite. It is. It's really bad. It's and it's such an addictive thing. It's when you win, you're on the high. But I remember going into the casino. I got a free ten pound bet. Put ones on all the numbers, and I won. So I came out with fucking. I think it was thirty six quid. And you sit there going, fucking hell, I've just won a pound from thirty six quid. It's so addictive, um, and I think. I don't think Sky and in Premier League and, and the big and, and, and the big companies aren't doing enough. You're literally promoting it, which I think is absolutely daft. You don't see people promoting cigarettes, some beds. You don't see them on adverts on telly, but you see gambling. There's no issue. There's it, it, it's an illness that people fall into. And obviously we all hope Sandro will come back and, and, and not bet and, and focus on his football career. But I don't think the Premier League and, and Sky are, are doing enough awareness because I think Paul Merson was addicted to betting and he, he said that they're not doing enough, which I don't think they are. On the positives though, he's came, he's got a lot of time to settle in now. He's not had that pressure of coming into the marquee sign and playing week in, week out and has to perform good. Learning the language, settling in well, knowing the squad, and Eddie Howe said since the since the since the ban, it's so annoying because he trains so good. It will be annoying. He's a sublime footballer. You don't get to captain AC Milan and and, and play for AC Milan and, and get them to a Champions League semi final. It's been a disappointing year. Yes, obviously it has, but it's not much of a positive. We've got to just sit and go, this is the situation, we've got two games left, he will perform good, he will become good, he will be a massive player for Newcastle United and hopefully he will become good because we spent a lot of money on him and obviously I don't think any team will, will sign him now, obviously apparently we didn't know about the betting scandals, did AC Milan, that's a whole different story but what can Tonali bring? Obviously, as I said, yeah, I think we are needing someone to sit in there and do the dirty work. He obviously does like to get forward, but 
he is a big massive miss for Newcastle United and hopefully he can perform good come good and um, and, and do some big big stuff for Newcastle next season next year could be massive for Newcastle obviously no European football Tonali's got the whole league to focus on and hopefully we can become good but that's my thoughts on Tonali boys let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and there we go boys that is the end let me know your thoughts on Sandro Tonali let me know your thoughts on the situation obviously I've got loads of videos getting released I'm back from holiday as you can see look I've not been to Italy I've been to fucking Tenerife and I'm still fucking burned but loads of videos going out boys on the channel we're back on the grind make sure to leave a like boys subscribe to the channel I'll see you all in the next one yeah, 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 yeah.